Money is the motive for a lot of people. We want more cash to do more, buy more, and have more freedom all around. It sounds great, right? Except for the fact that the more money you have, the more likely you are to be viewed negatively by others. Not so fun. Where does this sentiment come from? It's a complex perspective mixed with psychology, culture, and, of course, cash. Here are why most people won't like you if you're rich. Number one, most people just can't relate to being rich. Roughly 2.82 billion people on Earth have a net worth that is less than $10,000. The richest 1% own about half of the world's wealth. To break it down more for you, if you have a group of 500 people, only five would be considered rich, and they would make up half of that group's net worth. That means half of the money a 500-person group has goes to just five people. Do you see the disconnect? Now, add in the psychological need to connect with others. You don't like everyone, and that's because you can't relate to everyone. You relate to people who have similar experiences and similar cultural understandings. If I'm budgeting every dollar of my paycheck and think twice before spending more than $20 on anything, I am flabbergasted when my friend tells me she spent $1,300 on a new purse spontaneously. True story. I literally cannot comprehend that kind of lifestyle or those decisions. And that's exactly the disconnect that the average person, which in this case is 99% of the world, feels when they see you as Mr. or Mrs. Richie Rich. Number two, social comparison is natural and it breeds envy. Humans have been comparing themselves to one another since humankind began, and it's rooted in psychological, social, and evolutionary factors. First, comparison gives us a baseline of what we quote-unquote should be doing, which lets us evaluate where we are in life. This, combined with social norms, forms our identities and self-concept. Hundreds of years ago, this may have helped us survive, but now it's pretty much made us live in a never-ending competition with one another and unrealistic expectations. I mean, hello unrealistic filters and social media posts, am I right? It's almost impossible to stop socially comparing ourselves to others nowadays, which means anyone who has less money than you when you're rich is going to compare themselves to you financially and more than likely feel bad about it. If someone makes you feel bad about yourself, even if it's your mind doing the comparing, you probably wouldn't like them either. It's just the way the brain works, and only really enlightened and emotionally mature people will be able to feel otherwise. Number three, money is power, and power is often seen as corrupted and undeserving. Historically, the rich have a bad rap. Most were leaders who were cutthroat and took advantage of those less than them. If a person comes from a country with a history of exploitation or corruption, they are much less likely to empathize or even give a rich person a chance to present themselves. Politics are everywhere, and they're going to influence a large majority of people's ideas on wealth and power. Those who tend to favor economic equality are much more likely to be critical of the rich, especially if you're a rich person who doesn't seem to be contributing to equitable or charitable causes. Number four, we all have attribution bias. Attribution bias is a fancy term that means we attribute what happens to us to either external or internal factors. Usually these are inaccurate, which is why the word bias is in there. Let's say Dave has been working on a project at work for a few weeks and finally finished it. He thinks, I did a fantastic job on this project because I am competent and dedicated. You go, Dave. That is internal attribution. He attributes his work to his own doing. What we don't mention is that Dave actually completed this project with five other team members who split the work evenly. They also had favorable working conditions, clear instructions, and a supportive and open-minded boss. This is external attribution, but Dave didn't think about that. He exhibited bias and gave himself a whole lot of credit. So what does this have to do with you being rich? Well, we also attribute wealth internally or externally. If you meet someone with an external bias, they may say you only became rich through luck, your parents, or some other aspect, and ignore your own capabilities. 
These are the people who are unlikely to vibe with you and your supposedly undeserved richness. Number five, media influence is a real thing. If the last few years have taught us anything, it's how easily we are influenced by media, be it the news or social. Most entertainment and breaking news will emphasize scandals, extravagant living, and unethical behavior by the rich. I mean, scandal sells. Who wants to hear about how much Brad Pitt gave to charity? Not me, I wanna know who he's dating. Not really, but you get the point. These negative portrayals make the rich seem even more distant and sketchy than we initially thought, and you'll be grouped right with them even if you're not famous enough or lavish to land on the news. After hearing why most people won't like you if you're rich, does it affect your desire to make that guap? Probably not, but at least you know why you'll be frowned upon by most when you do. Luckily, we can always prove ourselves by being kind and helpful human beings. That way, even if you can't convince others to get on board, you'll at least know you're doing the best you can. I'm rooting for you and your financial success. As always, thanks for watching.